Good evening. I'm here to address you tonight on the topic of philanthropy. I know that you all are interested in making the world a better place. You have a little extra money, and you'd like to help some of the millions of people around the world who are struggling to survive. But first you have decisions to make. Who do you give to? And how do you give to them? My purpose here is not to address the first question. Who you decide to give to is a personal decision. But I would like to influence your choices when it comes to the second question. How should you go about donating your money? And my answer is, quite simply, get the data. When it comes to charitable contributions, most people make their decisions based on emotion. You see the ad showing poor children thirsty for knowledge, but stuck in a classroom without pencils or books or computers, and you sign a check to the charity because you want to help. And I applaud your humanitarian impulses. Many people also make the effort to check up on the organization in question in order to make sure that most of the donated money is reaching the people it's meant for, which is also a great idea. However, it is worthwhile to take one extra step to find out with hard data if the charity is distributing the money in a way that has been proven effective. Will the money you give really make a difference in people's lives? Let me give you an example concerning those poor school children. It is well established by research that people are better at saving money when they have what we call a commitment device. This is a means of saving money that keeps it out of your reach while you are saving. For example, a retirement account is a commitment device. You put your money into it, and you can't withdraw it until you retire. With this in mind, several educational organizations worked together to see if a commitment device could help poor school children in Uganda save money for school supplies. They wanted to design the most effective system possible. So to discover what this system would look like, they set up a scientific study. In one group of schools, they set up a hard commitment device. This means that the kids could put money in a lockbox every week, and at the end of the period of time in which they saved, their money was returned to them in the form of a voucher that could only be spent on school supplies. For the second group of schools, the children were presented with a soft commitment device. In this case, they also put money in a lockbox every week, but at the end of the period, the money was returned to them in cash. They could spend the cash however they wanted. And of course, since this was a scientific study, the third group of schools was a control group. They were not provided with any commitment device. They proceeded as normal, and their saving and spending was recorded. So which group was most successful? If we were going to guess, most people would say that the hard commitment device would work the best. That's what the researchers expected too. It seems obvious that the most effective strategy would be the voucher that can only be spent on school supplies. But that's not what the data revealed. The kids who received a voucher did better than the control group who had no commitment device at all. But it turns out that the soft commitment device worked the best. Kids who knew they were going to get cash back saved more money. And when their parents were involved in the process, they also spent more on school supplies and performed better on tests. What this study teaches us is that we shouldn't just assume that we know what works the best. We should test our beliefs with research. We should get the data so that we can be more effective donors and do a better job of helping those in need.